Thank you very much, Jeff, and, uh, and good afternoon. This is the little town of Huanco, in the middle of the Bolivian Andes. As you can see, Huanco is uh, in an absolutely beautiful setting. You can see the mountains in the background. But the problem with Huanco is that there is no electricity in Huanco, there's no water, there's no doctors, there's no nurses. But guess what? Wanko has access to cell phone signal. <laughs> and the question is, can we harness the power of telecommunications? Can we harness the power of cell phone signal to provide health care to remote populations such as Wanko, where the people have the least and need the most? And technology has been advancing tremendously. Can a doctor anywhere in the world, can he actually have access to a patient? Can he actually listen to the heart of a patient, the breath sounds of a patient? Can he actually diagnose using remote presence and technology? And this is actually happening. The pioneering efforts where we can provide healthcare access to the populations that are remote is truly happening now in the world. And here I am. I'm in my office in Halifax, and I'm listening to the breath sounds of a patient that is thousands of kilometers away, up in the Canadian north. And how do we do this? Well, let me introduce you the remote presence robot. Affectionately, we call this robot Rossi, just like the Jetsons. <laughs> and we've been pioneering the work of remote presence technology. And you can see three types of devices here. A robot that we can actually control and we can see a patient. I can do rounds on my hospital in Saskatoon from an internet cafe in India. Systems that will allow me to beam into an operating room and mentor a surgeon anywhere in the world, collaborate with my colleagues, be involved in the surgical procedure of taking a brain tumor. And one of the most interesting devices at the other end, what I call the doctor in a box. A doctor that you can take anywhere where there's a cell signal and can bring that individual expertise where it's needed, where the action is, where the patient is. And this is how we are working. You can see there uh, Rossi walking the hospital uh, uh, ward. Nobody pays attention anymore to Rossi. Everybody's familiar with it. You can see two robots here. And one individual can be an expert that is in Toronto, and the other one in Berlin. And they can collaborate and look at the scan of a patient and collaborate in the care of that individual. I'm there in the bottom picture there. I went to give a lecture in London, England, but I'm doing rounds every morning in my patients. And this is how we do that. This is 6.30 in the morning. We surgeons <laughs> get up very early. We huddle around the, the nursing station. We talk about the things of the day, and then we go and we go and do our rounds. <laughs> and this is a vision. This is a vision of the future. But really, how can we utilize this where it's most needed, where it's acutely needed? And I'm showing you Labrador, and that is the little Inuit town of Nain, the northernmost community in Labrador. It's a beautiful setting, and I'll show you this. This is Nain. It has about 2,000 people. It's in the middle of nowhere in the Canadian Arctic. And you can see there the, the strip there, the landing strip. The problem in Nain is that there's no doctors in Nain. Can you believe it? 2,000 people in a Canadian town where there's no doctors. There's a nursing station with the nurses. So what happens in Nain is that if you have a serious problem, a heart attack, you had an injury, or even if you have 
the normal e sequence of what a pregnancy would be. If you are a young mother that needs an ultrasound, you need to be flown from Nain two hours to Happy Valley Goose Bay. And that may not be a big issue. But the problem is, once you get into Happy Valley Goose Bay, you can stay there for three weeks. So in Nain, Labrador, Canada, most of the pregnant women don't get a prenatal ultrasound, something that is routine everybody does. And the infant and maternal mortality rate in Nain, Labrador, is as bad as in the Bolivian Andes, or as bad as one of the little towns in India. So this is the ambulance in Nain, very appropriately. And uh, I want to show you, if you, let's say, have an accident in your snowmobile, and you're taking, using this ambulance to the nursing station, you have a serious injury, the, the first thing that the nurses will do is they actually go to the window, and they see that mountain called Mount Carmel. And they, what they want to see is if they can actually see the top of the mountain. Why? Because if they see the top of the mountain, they know that a plane can land in Nain. But if you don't see the top of the mountain, you're on your own. And that is the issue with Nain. So and this is the type of plane that, that goes to Nain. You can land at night. So we put this remote presence robot in name, Rossi. And here I am in my office in Halifax, and I'm looking at a patient in name with the help of the nurses. So this system has been so useful to name that when we started the study, and I sent the robot for a year, and then I sent the plane to pick up the robot, and the people went to the nursing station to pick up the robot, couldn't find the robot. <laughs> the robot had been kidnapped <laughs> by the citizens of Nain because it had saved many lives. Not only, I just uh, listened, as you listened to this wonderful talk of Mark, health, mental health issues were critical in Nain, and we were able to bring the expertise of psychiatrists to talk to the teenagers of Nain. So I'm proud to say that the citizens of Nain got together and they bought their own robot. And Nain Labrador is the first place in the Arctic in the world that has its own Rossi. So, so we're now doing another community, Pelican Narrows in Saskatchewan, the same thing. It even in worse situation, 3,000 people, no doctors. And I just want to switch gears and show you the doctor in a box, because the doctor in a box can go everywhere. And we're putting it through its spaces in Halifax, in the winter of Halifax, to see how good the communication is. And I want to, you to remember this photograph. This photograph is an I iconic photograph. So this is an ATV accident that is in the countryside. And this, this firefighter, the first responder, that is doing an ultrasound of the abdomen of this individual to see if that individual has internal injuries. But the person that is actually doing the ultrasound is the doctor in a box, because the expertise is being beamed to the countryside, so you can do the diagnosis before even the ambulance arrives. So you can see if that individual has a serious injury that you need to intervene, you prepare the operating room. What happens now is the ambulance goes into the hospital and you do have the ultrasound. This technology is going to save countless of lives. It's going to take away the barriers of distance and time. And the technology is advancing. We now have peripheral devices that will allow us to do things that were unthinkable before. And what I'm showing you here is a handheld scan. This is really the initiation of the tricorder of Star Trek. So this scan can scan the head of an individual and within 10 to 15 seconds can determine if you have a hemorrhage inside the brain. So you can imagine the usefulness of this scan and can tell you, and then so this patient needs to be triaged to a neurosurgical unit where he needs to be operated immediately. And then we have handheld ultrasounds 
And the other really interesting thing is that we can not only take the doctor, the ultrasound, or this is kind of the head, but we can take the laboratory. And these are fast, rapid diagnostic tests. Within a few seconds, you can diagnose with a drop of blood if this patient has hepatitis, HIV, syphilis. This is going to be the future. We will be able to diagnose where the patient is, point of care diagnosis. Let me go back to the town of Wanko here in the Bolivian Andes. So what we're doing now in Huanco is we're getting the obstetricians in the city of La Paz to do prenatal ultrasounds on the women that are in these remote villages of the Bolivian Andes. Can you believe that a thousand women die every day in the world at childbirth for totally preventable causes? And prenatal ultrasound is going to save countless of lives. I'd like to invite you now to come with me to Nain Labrador. So um, this is a regular computer, and I'm just connected with a regular internet. And I just want you to come with me to Nain. I'm just going to connect this system. This is real time. This is the clinic in Nain Labrador. I just want to see how things are. I'm just going to take a look at things, see how things are around, and then I'm just going to try to move my robot. I'm just looking around, and the robot is being uh, connected. I just want to go and see how the weather is in Maine. I'm just going to go and take a look at this window. <laughs> I want you to show you Mount Carmel. This is named Labrador. And this is Mount Carmel, up there. So this is, and you can see, it's still light in name. It's not snowing yet, and this is the sea. Well, let me just go and just take a look and see who is in the clinic. I'm going to turn around. I'm just going to go to the front desk here. How are you doing, Jane? Good, how are you? How, how, was, the, how was the day today? The day was good, we got through it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still beautiful in Maine, it hasn't, it hasn't snowed yet. No, not good. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's too early yet. <laughs> so, Jane, do you mind if we can go and just take a, a look at your trauma room? Sure, come with me. Okay. There's a little bump here, I know. Yeah. And is he gonna go into the trauma room? There's a little bump there. So So this is where this is where everything happens here. Any emergencies or the unexpected or anyone who comes in with any type of injury or anything that's small to major emergencies all happens right here. I'm just gonna take a look at your monitor there. Just to sure. show capacity of this system to zoom. Thank you, Jane. This You're is very welcome. good. I'm just going to go around again. I'm just going to plug the robot. Thank you very much. I hope you have a good evening. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Bye now. See you. So 
I'm going to now plug the robot because what I'm trying to show you that this system can work independent of any human intervention. So there's a plug here in the wall of the robot and the plug has a laser. So I'm just going to turn it around and you can see the, that green light. And I'm just going to dock this robot and I'm going to ask him to dock and it's just no hands, just like your car. So the robot is going to align the two lasers. There's a laser in the robot and a laser on the wall. And once these are aligned, the robot is going to dock itself. And it will just al align there and it will, it will come to the other side and it will align it and then we'll just dock it. Okay. <laughs> and you can see that it has an assistance. We'll dock it again. We'll just cancel this. <laughs> and, then, and then you can see it's going to come back. You just have to give, you know, Rossi sometimes is temperamental. <laughs> and it's just going to now align. And now Rossi is going to dock itself. There. <laughs> But I wanted to show you something else. So we just went to name Labrador. And I wanted to show you the capacity of this system that with a click of a button, you can travel the country. Let me invite you to Saskatchewan. I'm just going to connect to a robot in Saskatchewan. So you can imagine a physician that can take care of be available and expertise in many places. So this is our robot in Saskatoon. In Saskatchewan, hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> this is real time. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? Still in Toronto? Yeah. Nobody pays attention to me anymore. <laughs> so I'm just gonna walk the. I'm just gonna go just in this room okay, just for a second. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. What What is the time now in, in Saskatoon? Well, four minutes, three minutes after three. Yeah. Well, I'm just in Toronto. How is the weather there? Rainy and yucky. Yeah. Yeah. The weather was here was pretty good. I'm just gonna turn around. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to put the robot in, in its place. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to show you the robot. I'm going to disconnect here. And I'm going to go to Santa Barbara, California. So, and I want to show you how this robot actually looks. And I'll connect here. So I'm traveling thousands of kilometers on a click of a button. And I'm actually remotely present to any of those places. So I'll go to this robot in Santa Barbara, which is a testing facility where, as you can see, you're going to see a lot of robots there. Whatever device, right now the bug is whatever device. Hello. Hello, how are hey, you doing? How, how, hey, how is the weather there in Santa Barbara? Oh, it's so beautiful. I drove to work with the top down. <laughs> really? David, how are you? I'm good. I'm very good. I'm just going to walk the robot a little bit, okay? Okay. I just want to I just want to show the audience how the robot looks in this in the in the mirror. <laughs> you can see there's a lot of other robots there testing these are the the one the white one is the is the live generation and you can see me here. There we are. Thank you. I'll disconnect now. So what I've done is I've shown you the proof of principle that you can remotely access different locations at the click of a button. I sincerely believe 
that this technology is going to change and revolutionize the way we practice medicine. And above all, it's going to allow us to narrow the gap of inequality in healthcare delivery in our country and the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>